Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, I once again take a look at one of your designs that you recommended me on Mod.io or in the comment section below. And if you do want to recommend me something in the comment section below, just leave the name of the vehicle and hopefully YouTube won't clear it up. If not, you can always message me on Mod.io and actually send me a direct link. But for today, we are looking at another transport vehicle. This one is called the ASB Speeder Buggy V2, which is this lovely thing sitting right next to me. So this is a passenger transport ship that's great for moving a lot of people from one place to another, say from your base to a train station, or just over to a general point of interest that you want to go exploring in. It uses atmospheric thrusters, it's got no weapons, but it does have weapon lockers that you can see right there for you to store all your guns and ammunition inside, so you can easily just drop out, grab your weapon, and shoot whatever pesky drone is coming towards you. By the way, pressing F10 and find this in the spawn menu, the Speeder Buggy V2 is 221 small blocks, using the Wasteland Warfare 2 Sparks of the Future and Warfare 1 DLC packs. We can see a nice bit of information about it, such as it's atmospheric only, it has a built-in speaker system so you can cruise around listening to music, and there is its cargo space, its weapon racks, and then we've got its PC block count and all the important stuff about it. So giving this thing a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, well, good look, around the outside, drive around for a bit, maybe just slam it into this moon to see how it crumbles on here. I can't actually remember the last time I did a showcase on this moon, so this is the first in a long time. Anyway, at the very front for the Speeder Buggy V2, what we got are two atmospheric thrusters to slow this thing down, and on the left and right hand side we can see a bunch of our warfare spotlights that are currently blinding us. Above there is our buggy cockpits to drive this thing around and I control everything about it, and then just behind there you can just about make out a battery to give it a bit of power. If we were to move around onto the side, we'll see another light, this time in green. And there's the first of two weapon lockers for you to store all your weapons and ammunition inside. There's some great use of our neon tubes allowing you to hop up and get into the cockpit if you want to do a bit of role playing of actually getting into the ship. And there's two passenger seats for well to take your passengers with you on your adventure. Moving all the way along, there's another spotlight. There's a bunch of Amstrad crosses for your left and right. Right below there is a bunch of small batteries for some additional power. And right below there, we can see one of four sound blocks. If we move around towards the very back, another green spotlight. There is a time block, so it does have a blinking beacon system. But we'll see that a bit later on. And then at the very back there, we've got We Break For No One, more Amstrad crosses, and all the way down there, we then got Uncle Jay, and there's the other sound block on the opposite side. Moving all the way up and looking down this thing, there's some more great use of our neon tubes in a glorious pink colouring. There's an antenna to make sure you always find this thing. Looking all the way down, there's our batteries on both sides. There's all of our atmospheric thrusters, with a few barred window blocks on top of them for some decoration. Moving all the way across, there's our seats on the opposite side. There's the weapon locker on the opposite side. And we can see the glow of a red light instead of green, so people know which direction you're flying. Anyway, moving all the way down on this thing, past all of this, there we go. So at the very bottom of this thing, we see our other sound blocks. We see even more great use of our neon tubes. There's a the bottom of our batteries. There's a the bottom of our atmospheric thrusters. And there is our connector to dock this thing up. Then right over here, right behind our magnetic plates, we do have an ore detector, so we can go out and about and scout for ore patches, if that's what you want to do. There we go, that is that for the outside, and it looks great with how it's all been set up. It looks like it should be very easy to build in survival mode, and should prove very useful in it, when it comes to transporting people from one place to another. So now what I can do, just grab hold of my character, we come up into one of these seats, come into this one first of all. So there we go, these are the controls we get. So we have to bring out the HUD and click on this, we can try our lights, we can try our batteries, then looking down, we see our target lock, our weather, and our planetary and atmospheric gravity. If we were to come around to the opposite side, in we get, we then got our main controls, we can see we've got controls for our thrusters, so first of all, we just go and lift this off the ground, press number 8, there we go, with press number 1, as that could be our cruise to move forwards and not slow down, number 2 is going to be your thrusters all around the ship, turn them on and off, number 3, number 4 is for your sound block system to actually play the music, but with press number 3, and then start playing, turning that off so it's bloody loud. Number five, turn the lights around the ship on and off. Number six for your batteries to auto or recharge. Number seven, number eight for your magnetic plates. And then number nine for your connector underneath the ship to lock and unlock it. Over to tab number two, they've got an antenna, a beacon on and off. Three and four is for your beacon system, where if you were to say press number three, what's going to happen is our beacon is going to blink on and off on a set timer. So with the bring up HUD here, we can see that our beacon is now turned off. But then after 30 seconds, it's going to switch itself back on, be a constant blinking signal. But for the moment, we just switch off that, make sure that's all turned off. Five and six is once again for your sound block to turn them on and off. Number seven is for your ore detector, turn that on and off. And there's no surprise that I'm surrounded by ice. 
And then number nine is an optional block, which is your reactor, turn that on and off, if you do have access to uranium. Of course you can always miss this out because it's only a singular one, and the tube is perfectly fine at driving around on battery power. So that all done and out of the way, what we're going to do is drive this thing around, see how it handles, and then we'll go and crash it into a small outcropping. So moving forwards, as you can see, we're bloody fast, so we should be able to get to our destination very, very quickly. Coming to a stop, we are also very good, and we can always do a 180 if you do want to stop a bit quicker. And there we go with that. So letting that come to a stop, moving left, and then moving right. There we go, a little bit slower than forwards and backwards, but still very respectful at the end of the day. Moving down, we do have help by thrusters, then moving up, we are bloody fast, which is always good to have, because you never know what kind of gravity you're going to be flying in. Then as for gyroscope controls, as you saw from the 180, we've got plenty of control over this, a tiny hint of weight on this is not too uncontrollable, and just flicks around randomly when you move the mouse, it's certainly stable, and certainly suits a transport ship. Speaking of transport ships, what we'll do quickly is come into here, find the cargo containers, there we go, we've got a small one on the side to store all our stuff we collect, Yes, now it's time to actually crash this and see how it crumples. So what we're going to do is hide the HUD and aim that little place right there. We'll see what kind of destruction we can cause. So now running at 100 meters per second, once again hiding the HUD. Don't know why I keep flicking that back up. But here we go, in about 5 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. And that was a terrible miss by me. How did I misjudge that? But that was still a bloody good crash. Look at the hole we made. And we'll lost the complete front of it. In fact, there's some uranium to pick up. There we go. I'll save that for a bit later. But it looks like we've still got plenty of power on this. We've still got plenty of atmospheric thrusters. We've got an ore detector. So we should be able to slap on a couple more thrusters, a seat, and be on our way once again. But yes, that is that for the Speeder Buggy V2. It's a lovely little transport ship to use in your world if you want to. In fact, there's a gun right there. I'll take that for now. Yes, there'll be a link to it in the description below if you wish to download and play around with it yourself. I highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye-bye.